solid ground i am your host of this motivational and inspirational podcast and i want to talk today about facing the challenges getting through the challenges when doing right becomes more of a challenge then you know you're doing the right thing it's easy to do wrong there are times when we get to a point in our lives where doing the right thing is a struggle Not because you don't want to do the right thing, but because you want to stand on your righteousness. And that no matter what you're facing, you're not going to be moved. However, that struggle can be pretty much a great struggle. It can be such a struggle that you're like, okay, what is the purpose? Why am I doing the right thing? And Satan is doing everything he possibly can to blow me off the mountain. And it's because God has something for you. The closer you get to God, the more Satan is going to fight you. The harder you fight to get closer to God, the harder that Satan is going to fight. He wants you to do wrong so bad because he already knows your weak spot. He already knows what it will take to get you off that course. He already knows. But instead of you falling off the cliff, you keep hanging on. There are many times where I find myself standing on the edge of the cliff, and I'll tell God, I'm standing right here on the edge of the cliff, God. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if you're going to let me fall or provide me a road to keep going. But I'm not going backwards. I'm not going to go to the left. I'm not going to go to the right. I'm going to move straight ahead. And I made up my mind that's what I'm going to do. No matter what. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's, it's, it can be almost to the point where you're ready to pull out all your hair. Because you want to cry. You just want to sit in the middle of the floor and just pout. I remember when... One of my, I don't know if it was a niece or a cousin, my mom was babysitting. And that baby cried and cried and cried and cried. My mother sat in the middle of the floor and she started having a fit. She started pouting and crying. The baby stopped crying and looked at her like it was something wrong with her. The whole point, she got, his, she got the baby's attention. That this is what you're acting like. And we want to sit on the floor and we just want to belly and cry and feel sorry for ourselves. And this is exactly what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to go and hide our face in shame because things are not working out the way that we want to work out, want it to work out. That every time we start moving forward, another opposition is in our path. And then we're asking ourselves, so why, God, why? You, you're telling me to do this. You're telling me to walk this way. And I keep walking this way and I keep running into this opposition. Why do you keep telling me to go this way? Well, I look at Moses. Look how many times he had to go to Pharaoh. Look how many times he had to tell Pharaoh. Or it was Aaron speaking on his behalf. Let my people go. God didn't make it happen in one time, in the first time. He didn't make it happen the second time. It took several times for them to go before Pharaoh, before Pharaoh finally let his people go. And it was because he lost his only son. That's what it took for him to finally let the children of Israel go. But God didn't make it easy for Moses. And I know that somewhere along through there, even though it may not be written, that human side of him came out somewhere like, oh my goodness, why is God allowing this to happen to me? He told me to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let his people go. 
And he's not letting them go. But it was a reason. He was trying to show Moses something. Number one, he was trying to build his faith. How much faith he, would he have had if God had let him go the first time? Would he have had the great faith that he needed to put that staff up, up, over the water and let the water divide so the children of Israel can walk through? Would he have had that faith? Possibly not. God had to build his faith for the next biggest challenge that he was going to be faced with. This is what it's all about. The challenges that we meet in our life is not to break us. It's to strengthen us. It is to strengthen our faith in God. It's not to tear us down. It's to build us up. Satan wants to tear you down. But God wants to build you up. Satan wants you to build on sand. God wants you to build on a solid rock. It takes longer to build on the rock. Because there's a lot of strength in that rock. A structure, yes, can go up on sand easy. It may be faster to do. But it'll sink quicker as well. I've seen on engineering ca catastrophes where that very thing had happened. Building on sand. And the building or the structure was slowly seeping. It was sinking. Yes, it was a good idea at the time that they built it. But when you are trying to take that easy road, it's a consequence in behind that. And I would rather struggle on a solid ground and know that once that structure is built, it's built to last until God tears it down. God will destroy something. I, I believe he will. Because if he does not like how it's being ran, or if it's not going the way that he anticipated it for it to go, he'll destroy it. Because he don't want unrighteousness within his house, whatever creation he built. He'll destroy it. The challenges that we face in our lives can be long-term, can be short-term, can be, um, it can be perfect, it can be imperfect. We need to look at why God is challenging us. What are we asking God for? Are we asking him for some things that is going to be, if it was a human being to do it, would it have been a, a challenge to that human being to do? Possibly. But we asking God to do it. And nothing is a challenge to God. But he's going to challenge our faith in him. We got to meet a measure. We got to meet a mark. It's almost like, you know how whenever we were growing up as kids and God and you know our dad or our mom would put us against a wall and they would look at our height and they would mark our height as we grow and they wanted to see how we were growing throughout the years probably starting at the age of five and then they'll look at how much we grew from the age of five to the age of six. And they steadily do that until we stop growing. We have faith like that. There's a margin of faith that whenever we ask God for something, we got to meet that mark. 
There are some marks that are quicker to get to than others. There are some marks that's going to be harder for us to get to. But it's not impossible to get to. Now, if the mark is not on that challenge, meaning if God does not have that marking for your journey, uh, you might want to rethink that and ask God what his will is for your life. Because we can be challenging God for something or asking God for something that's not even in his will. And we're asking in vain. That when we go and do it on our own, it's not going to be successful. It's going to fail. So make sure of the markings. Make sure that it's in God's will, first of all. Second of all, once it's in, once you know and God approves of it being in his will, then we pray for it. That marking might be 50 stanzas away. And we are on number two. We got a long way to go. God is not in no hurry. It's all up to you how fast you want to get there. The greater your faith, the quicker you will get there. The weaker your faith, the longer you're going to get there. The steadier your faith is going to be consistent, meaning it's not going to be wishy-washy. You have to be steady in your faith walk. That as you grow in your faith, the closer you will get to that milestone, the closer you will get to that blessing. And God will say, okay, now, now that you have this blessing, now that you rich your mark, what are you going to do now? First of all, I'm going to bow down before God and, you know, my knees is not in the best of shape. But I want to take that time to say thank you for getting me to this point. It's not God asking us, what are we going to do? It's about us asking God, what do you want me to do? Now that I'm here, God, what is my next step? That's where the transition, the transformation come in. Because now that you've reached it, it's now time to ask God, okay, what do I do from here? Like I did last year <laughs> when I first started this podcast. Once I did the opening once I did the opening of the podcast or the introduction, I said, now, God, what do I do? I did the introduction. What do you want me to do now? And God had to show me what to do, little by little. Now I have more than enough to do. And I make time to do it. It's not finding time. It's making time. See, it's a difference. When God asks you to do something, you make time. When you are wanting to do something, you find the time. It's a day. You don't put God last. You put God first. And then everything else you make time for. You find the time to do. That's another challenge that we have to overcome. Because when we put God first, then God can bless us that much more. We put God last, uh-oh, we in trouble. The challenge is going to be that much more greater. When you have set aside time to go to church, you made that time to do that. When you set aside time to pray, you made that time to do it. That in anything that we do, we make the time for it when it comes to God. Everything else falls by the wayside. And I noticed whenever I made time for God to do things that I need to do for Him, He makes time for everything else for me to be allowed to do. And I appreciate God for that. And I'm like, wow, I got everything done. Yeah, because I put God first. That is what's important. Facing the challenges, it's, it's difficult at times. Yes, you want to cry. Yes, you want to probably snatch out all your hair sometimes. 
Lord, you know, in some cases, I've seen women just snatch off their wig. They say, oh, forget it. But stick with it. Don't lose the faith. Don't lose the focus. Keep going. Your blessing is coming. You just got to get there. And the greater your faith, the further you go. This is Kim with Standing on Solid Ground. You have yourself a wonderful and blessed day.